from a really early age, as, as long as I can remember, um, really loved books. And I was a pretty anxious kid. Um, and I didn't really feel um, like I belonged anywhere, which I, I realize is uh, part of, you know, many people's uh, biographies. But at that time, I thought I was like, especially alone in the universe. And books helped with that so much. Um, and it really was such an antidote to loneliness for me. And I also felt like it was this incredible innovation where, you know, as an anxious kid, you can carry a book with you and open a door to this other universe. And, you know, you just, you can, you can fit four of those doors in your book bag. I mean, it's, it's incredible. The thing about books, particularly really scary books, I felt like you could find adults being honest about dimensions of reality. Um, you know, what made me feel crazy as a kid was feeling like, look at how much injustice there is, look at this violence, look at these horror stories happening all around. And it was a place where certain things are disarmed. You're like, it's just, it's just the book. It's fiction. You know, they're telling me right on the, it's just made up. Um, but it's made up out of all of these, um, it's made up out of life. It's made up out of someone's experience of this planet. Um, so I felt like this was sort of like a, a, a place I could go, these books that were funhouse mirrors or um, the, 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 the parts of life that I felt it was difficult to talk about in this realm. If you wanna be a writer, you should read like an omnivore. Hmm. And so you should read like omnivorously, like, you know, I thought when I was uh, in high school that I didn't really like poetry. Like I love read, I love reading fiction, but I don't, I don't care to read poetry. And uh, someone said, if you want to be a writer, you need to read like an omnivore. You should read outside your comfort zone, you know, reading nonfiction, reading memoir, reading poetry, like pushing yourself to read something that you think you're not going to like, or you think, no, that's not really in my wheelhouse. Starting with kind of a, a what if and not worrying too much that I don't know where it's going to go. Um, and, and letting myself kind of write too much, you know, like making a big mess, actually. That's part of my process, making a really big mess in the beginning. And then only, you know, when I have something with sort of some semblance of a beginning, middle, and an end, looking at it and saying like, okay, what is actually interesting here? What's the real question here? And then getting help to it, asking other readers that I trust to look at it and let me know, kind of give me some echoes back. Like, did you, um, what was the, the scariest part of this to you? What was the funniest part? You know, what, what, what was most alive to you? Where were you sort of most riveted? And where were you kind of like tuning out a little bit? And that's so helpful to know. And I, I often don't know that myself. I need other readers to help me. And then, and then doing another pass trying to clear away some of that stuff that's not actually in the service of the story. With um, writing, you can, you can make a universe, you know, using language and pencils and paper and, or your computer, right? Your MacBook. And you can take a Word document and beam it over to somebody else. And, and then they, you know, with, with luck and trial and effort, you know, it becomes it becomes a dream that you can transmit to so many other people. And I do think that's really, there's something magical about that. It's always, it's always surprising to me, kind of the worlds and worlds that one person can have inside themselves. There are stories that only you guys can tell in all the world, you know, there's no consciousness like yours. There's no sort of perspective either of the millions and millions of people on this planet. You're the only ones that see the world the way that you do and can and have the stories inside you that you need to tell. Mm -hmm. I just have to say, this is what I want to do. This is what I love to do. And it's really, it's on me now to just claim my seat here and say, I have a story worth telling. Mm -hmm.